morning everyone. It's Monday, May the 1st. Eagerly awaiting the irrigation. Yeah, I know I'm a bit eager for it, but hey, can't blame me. It's May, it's hot. It's nice to get out of the things. <laughs> Probably be another day at least before it's uh, switched on. Probably takes a day to fill the canal up. I mean, they only opened the taps this morning, so. But uh, it shouldn't take too long to fill the canal. I had a bunch of water in it already. But uh, either way, I'll be checking it probably multiple times today because I can't wait for it to be switched on. Sheep are still doing good. Still no lambs. Still waiting on that. But uh, seem to like being out on this side. Haven't gone as uh, crazy on the leaves as I thought they would, but you know, that's okay too. Even them being out here is crunching them down and uh, breaking them down into the soil, so that's a bonus. But uh, yeah, they're still supplementing a bit of hay just because I'm not sure how much uh, grass they're getting because so much of it is covered in leaves here. But yeah, they're doing good. Going through a bunch of water because of course the warm weather now. Yesterday got up to 23 degrees, today it's possibly even hotter. So yeah, I've been having to watch the water pretty good. They've been going through six buckets a day. Can't wait for the irrigation to be on for these guys because uh, it makes my job a lot easier. I can just leave a hose in the bucket and leave it uh, turned on a little bit and keeps it topped up all day. Here's where the sheep were a couple days ago. You can see exactly where the fence line was. <laughs> they ate the grass down pretty good right along the fence area there. So yeah, it's kind of funny. You can see exactly the outline of the uh, fence that I had, but that's a good thing. Means they are eating it down pretty good. Now I'll get to keep them off this area for a little while, let it recover, and uh, hit a few other areas. I like this chainsaw for the most part, but one fatal flaw it has if you hit any small branch while you're cutting, the chain's coming off. Pretty much guaranteed. It doesn't matter how tight or not the chain is, if you hit a small branch while you're cutting a bigger branch, it's coming off. So, Greenworks, come on now, you gotta do better than that. It's a pain in the ass to have to do that every time you hit a small branch. You know, it doesn't matter if it's one or five small branches. You know, even if you try and cut a few small branches on a dogwood, it doesn't matter. You hit small branches, the chain's coming off. So, really frustrating, but, uh, you know, that's one of the flaws of the saw, I guess. Another flaw, I'll call it a flaw, on the saw is uh, a little bit too much oil comes out. So it gets all gummed up in here. This is just from cutting a few poplars, and uh, you can see it's already quite full, so every time you use it, you have to pretty much clean it out, take it all apart, so a bit of a pain, but, you know, it is what it is. I'd rather it be too much oil than uh, not enough and break the chain, I guess, so trade-offs. Now I'm done bad-mouthing this, this uh, chainsaw, I want to talk about the good. Uh, it's really quick starting, I really like that. Just press and hold the button. Safety trigger, ready to cut. So no warming up, no messing around with mixing fuel, no oil changes, nothing like that. Just press the button, pull the safety, pull the trigger, you're cutting. Um, it's got a lock on there. It can come in handy when you don't want it to turn on. Barrel on the side there, easy to fill. So. Yeah, it's really, really easy to use, so that's good. Decent sized barrel, 16 inch, and uh, 40 volts, so a uh, good amount of power. Not as powerful as a gas, but the uh, flip side is it's a lot lighter than gas too. I mean, it's uh, probably half the weight of a gas powered saw, so. Yeah, overall, still pleased with it, uh, despite the foibles, but. Yeah, anyway, it, uh, it took down a bunch of the uh, tall poppers over here for me, so. Did its job cut down, I don't know, 15, 20 good sized poplars there, the branches are, the trunks were two inches to, the biggest one I think was five inches, and uh, yeah, cut through them like butter, you know, cut them all down in probably five minutes, if that, and that includes all the walking and pushing the branches over and everything, so yeah, it's real quick to use, uh, nice to not have to mess around with mixing fuel if it's a two-stroke or uh, oil changes, and all that so yeah it's uh, it's great for little jobs like that you know it's uh, not so great for taking down whole trees but uh, 
you know, that's not really what it's meant for around here. It's meant for the quick little jobs like this. You know, take down one or two branches or trees and uh, you know, small trees and off you go. So that's where it really excels. And, uh, you know, as long as you don't hit any small branches like I did today, it'll be fine. Um, yeah, there was a hidden branch behind one of the poplars I didn't see as I was cutting. And cut, 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 snap, uh, chains off. Okay. Fortunately, it was on the last trunk I was taking down, so wasn't too much of a pain. Just uh, grabbed the handsaw and finished the job. It was basically all the way through already, but still, you know, got the job done. Can't complain, and now I have a bit of cleanup to do. More branches to uh, more more biomass there for the gas fire if we get on that, or yeah, may may take a few cuttings from these. We'll see. Kind of want irrigation for that, but uh, you know, times are ticking. They're going to be uh, leafing out here pretty quick, so got to get cuttings done pretty quick if you want to do that in the spring, especially this year where it's not much of a spring, kind of straight in summer now. But you know, that's life on the farm. Sometimes you gotta gotta do what you gotta do, and uh, you know, best time of year I think for us to get cuttings for these is probably in the fall because we have more time then. But uh, yeah, of course, the last fall was so short that we didn't really have much time. And you can see on this close one here, it's already starting to leaf out. You can see the green little tip there poking out. You know, same with this one, it's starting to green up on the buds there. So won't be long before they're leafing out, so it might be a little bit late for cuttings as it is. But, uh, you know, might try a few anyway and see how it goes. I mean, it doesn't really cost us anything other than a bit of time, a bit of effort. So, yeah, and I mean, worst case scenario, if they don't take, then we'll just uh, put something else in the trays for cuttings. So, you know, we can always get willow cuttings to go. That's pretty easy, but uh, just have to make sure it's the right type of willow for the area. We've had uh, some bad luck with lower leaf willow cuttings. They, any sort of drying out in the toast, um, you know, even the even the trees, the lower leaf, any drying out in the, you know, down back on branches and stuff so haven't had great success with those but uh <coughs> sorry that's me but uh golden leaf willow have been or golden golden willow sorry they've been great haven't had any issues with those they've been fast growing uh pussy willows have been another great one got some seedlings for those last year and they've really taken off they go uh, about six oh no sorry they go about two feet Getting a long tree there. <laughs> yeah, they grew about two feet last year and, uh, you know, came as a six inch little cutting. And yeah, they're nice and tall now, so great uh, rate of growth on those. So really pleased with that. Gold willow, same thing. They're really quick growing. So yeah, they like the moist ground, but uh, golden willows just seems to be a little bit more drought tolerant than uh, the lower leaf willow. So yeah, if you have a good wet area, lower leaf willow is great. But, uh, yeah, I uh, have a couple other willows that we're trying out. The cute leaf willow. I uh, haven't seen how that does in the field yet. And uh, uh, silver willow is the other one we have. Uh, giving that a try. And uh, yeah, see how those grow. So far, so good. But, uh, you know, time will tell. The acute leaf willow is known for its fast rate of growth. Uh, even faster than the uh, pussy willow and the cute leaf willow. Or sorry, the lower leaf and the golden willow. It's uh, supposed to be the fastest growing out of all of them. The uh, supplier says, uh, you know, an established tree can grow up to six feet in a single year. So that's a pretty good rate of growth, really. And, uh, you know, super easy to do cuttings on that. So if you have a uh, damp area that needs some uh, shelter or some trees, you know, willows are the way to go. And uh, cute leaf is the fastest. Lower leaf, pretty good. Uh, but uh, we've experienced some die back here, but we don't have a super wet area for them. And uh, Golden Willow has done really well. I uh, haven't had any real issues with them. haven't had any tie back on them, we've noticed so far. So, yeah, another good choice for willows. Starting to see green buds on the apple trees here, which is nice to see. Can't wait for the apples to flower. It's always a highlight of the spring is seeing all the apples flower, whether uh, crab apple or eating apple or ornamental. Always great to see because, uh, you know, it's great for them to put on all those flowers great burst of colour and uh, of course bees love it so yeah I can't wait for that to happen but uh, still a little ways away it's starting to green up the buds now so time will tell 
how long that'll be, but, uh, you know, probably three weeks or something we'll have it on full flower. But, uh, yeah, it's going to probably tell. A bit of a stuffy nose right now, allergy season. <laughs> I used to have really bad allergies uh, before I came out to the farm here. It was uh, to the point where I couldn't do more than, you know, five, ten minutes of gardening before I was bursting out sneezing. But uh, since coming from the farm here, I kind of forced myself the first year, and uh, since then, it's been uh, nowhere near as bad. You know, I get a bit of a stuffy nose, a few sneezes now and then, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can come out and work all day if I have to, and, uh, you know, push through the runny nose, but yeah, so one of the good things about uh, rural life is uh, better for the allergies. Not a lot of people realise that, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, a lot better. I mean, you get exposed to a lot more allergens, so the body gets a little more used to them. That's, I think, the biggest thing. Still can get all the apples here as I'm rambling on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, better get uh, back to work here. Uh, I know the apples have some uh, green on them. It's uh, nice to see, and, uh, yeah, better get back to it. Any irrigation yet? Nope, not dripping yet. Our filter leaks quite a bit when it's first turned on, so we can always tell when the irrigation's on. Plus, they usually give us a call too, but... Guess I'll be checking many times today. Can't wait for it to be turned on. This is the screen that's in our filter. It's decently uh, small mesh. It filters out most uh, bigger items, so works quite well. It uh, has a few issues, uh, takes up a lot of room with how it's put in there, and uh, the seal on the end leaks a bit, but otherwise, good little filter, or well, big filter, I guess. You know, we don't have to clean it out that often. We've only cleaned it out once since we've moved here three years ago, and uh, yeah, so it's been pretty good, pretty reliable. But uh, yeah, I would like a slightly different filter, though, just because it takes up a lot of room in there. Now I'm just working on clearing up the poplars I cut down here. I cut them off at stubs at, you know, three, four feet high. A um, couple of reasons for this. First, uh, I mean, I don't mind if they keep growing for another year here. Um, good biomass. Good for the soil to keep things growing here. So I don't mind if they keep growing. They're just getting too close to the power lines. So I had to shorten them a bit. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons. The other reason is, uh, you know, it cause them to branch out more and... Uh, will give us more to uh, wrap the chain around when we uh, pull them out. So, get a bit of a bonus for that, but uh, hey, it'll look good. You can see there's quite a few I had to uh, chop down here. You um, have to be really aware when you're uh, pulling your stuff out, because uh, of course you're cutting it down under the power line, and uh, you, know, you don't want to lift it up too high when you carry it out and make contact with the power line. So really want to make sure you're dragging it along the ground, not lifting it up. But, uh, yeah, just pay, pay attention, be aware, and, uh, you know, everything will be okay. That's, that's the main thing. One load loaded up already. Still more to go. Work never ends around here. Ah, still no irrigation. Keep hoping. Still nothing there. I should know better. Probably tomorrow, but I keep hoping. Ah, paperwork time. Gotta do a, uh, request for info for the county for the house and such but uh, what a great spot to do it out on the deck here next to my little herb garden here and a couple of uh, carnations couldn't get better Starting to see a few things pop. Ink is well on its way. Some creeping jenny hiding in there somewhere too. Both are well on their way to growing. The line back here, it's starting to bud out. One on the other side's leafing out. This one's a little more shaded. And over at Forsythia, we've got flowers. Yesterday they were just buds. Today they're out in full flower. So growing pretty quick, which is good to see. Dogwood here, starting to bud out in the lower branches that were below the snow line. 
So it's a little bit ahead for some of the others. Nice to see. Pine's not doing so good after the deer damage. Some junipers showing a bit of uh, stress. Weeping Kerrigana even got chewed by the deer this winter. But over on the far side here. Honeysuckle. You can see a few uh, leaves on that already. So that's really popping as well. Still no irrigation. Oh man. Keep hoping. Still waiting. I've been cutting a few more limbs back by the irrigation shed here. Still no irrigation on today. So well, I guess it'll be another day now. It's 4.30 so they've probably gone home for the day. Cow probably just wasn't quite filled enough or clean enough yet to turn on so yes keep waiting for another day. I'm a little impatient but hey I'm, I'm eager to get the irrigation. But uh, anyway, that'll be a wrap for this uh, edition, I guess, so uh, catch you next time. Thanks for watching, folks.